Welcome to the video. Today, I thought we'd talk about Silverado. Why I chose it to haul my truck camper. Let's go. The truck's a 2015 Silverado 3500 HD. It's got six and a half foot bed, and it's a crew cab. A lot of people have asked, well, I wish I would've got a dually. What do I think about a dually? Or do I wish I had a dually? To be honest with you, the length I am right now, I'm just barely getting into these parking spots. So if I had a dually, that would be tough. I'd have to go to a standard cab or a short extended cab. And I use that space back there way too much. I don't want to give that up. I'll show you what I'm talking about with the parking spaces. So you can see that my back end is just barely poking out of the spot. In the front, all the baskets hanging over the sidewalk. I imagine the length of a dually would probably be what this is with that basket up front. Breakfast champions. I'll run into Walmart, we'll look at one more example. I'm just gonna pull up to where I think I need to stop so I'm not in the other spot. Let's go take a look. All right, well, that's about as far as you would want to pull up if there was another car here. It's not busy today at Walmart. Let's take a look in the back. Now, all you can see, I'm hanging in the lane, driving lane, pretty good. Well, we're taking a look right down the aisle now. With the dually, I'd be hanging over another foot or two. I'm already kind of maxed out on length. I don't know that I'd want to go any longer. So now I touched a little bit on this prior video. Uh, the tires that I run are at 295, 70, 18. Uh, they're two inches taller and an inch wider than the factory tires. And because they're bigger, they have a higher load index rating. These tires are capable of carrying 552 pounds more per tire than the originals. So why wouldn't everybody switch out to a 129 index rated tire? Well, I needed to lift up the front end of my truck to make it fit. I went with a leveling kit. The leveling kit that I ran was Suspension Max. The nice thing about that kit, it comes with differential drop spacers. So it lowered my differential front axle down, which keeps the geometry a lot closer to being level. I also changed out the control arms. The reason I did that is because when you're out off-road, you need as much articulation as you can get. And if you try and crank up the torsion bars on your stock truck and leave the original factory control arms in, you're gonna lose all articulation. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is, if you don't do it right, you're gonna get a harsh ride. When your tires go up and down and up and down inside the wheel well, you're gonna hear banging and pounding. It's not gonna be smooth. Another thing that'll help are shock absorbers. I put in the Billistine. They're a great shock absorber. They're a little bit stiffer than the factory. This came with the Z71 off-road package, which means that it has the Ranchero shocks, and these are a little bit stiffer, which is actually a good thing when you're talking about 4,000 pounds in the bed of your truck. Another important upgrade is gonna be a steering stabilizer. When you get on washboarded roads, roads that are full of rocks, your steering wheel will be shaking like this. A steering stabilizer will dampen all of those movements. So your steering wheel, stay nice and straight, won't be jumping out of your hands. Another upgrade I never thought about until I had issues was the tie rod ends. So if you're going up this sharp grade, four wheel drive, you have all that weight in the bed of your truck, your tie rods will bow. The way I fixed that, is I put a set of PPE tie rods in. A lot of guys run Timberins. I was one of those guys as well. Ran Timberins for a few years. They did all right. The problem that I had was once I lifted the truck, I needed to stack spacers on the Timberins. If I left this truck factory, 
I would have probably kept the Timberlands. I like the fact that there's no maintenance to them. You put them in and you're done. So now that I'm running the bigger tires in the leveling kit, I had to figure out how to combat the sagging rear end. That's when I went with 7,500 pound Firestone airbags. I've been running them for a year now and I really like them. I also added the onboard air compressor, which comes in really handy because with the remote control, I can fine tune the height of the truck as much as two and a half inches on each side. I still use blocks, but it's nice to be able to drop one side down two inches, raise the other side up two inches. Sometimes I don't even need to get the blocks out. One thing that Timberins did really well, better than the airbags, was keeping the truck from rolling back and forth. So that's when I decided to put on the big wig sway bar. It was a huge difference, big game changer, even better than the Timberins did. Where the sway bar really shines is in the turns. It's amazing. When the weight gets pushed to one side of the vehicle, that sway bar helps distribute it across the whole axle. Keeps the truck really planted to the ground nicely. The last thing we're gonna talk about is how I engaged the overload springs in my truck a lot quicker. You can get full benefits out of the upper and lower overloads if you engage them right away. Here's how I did that. This is the lower overload. And this felling wedge fits the contour of the spring pack perfectly. I painted it black so you can't see it, used a locking nut on the bottom, and it's been there for years. This rubber bushing I got from Energy Suspension, 18 bucks for two of them. You need two for each side. What this does is this allows this upper overload to get engaged without having to collapse all the way down another two or three inches. I've been running this in the felling wedge for about the last 40,000 miles with absolutely zero problems. There is a company that sells upper and lower stable loads for these trucks. It does the exact same thing as these two products. It's going to run you over 600 bucks for them though. I'd suggest try it this way first. So this is going to wrap up all the suspension on this truck. But here's the deal. All of this is just my opinion. If you want to know more, research it. Check it out. Make these decisions on your own. Because you don't need any of these upgrades to run a truck camper. They're just things that I found that make it a little bit easier along the way. Well, I told you guys that I was gonna tell you why I chose the Silverado. And the main reason, well, the Duramax. You can't deny that a diesel will outperform a gas any day. So don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great trucks out there. The Cummings motor, it's awesome. Ford has that 6.7 that absolutely flies. But I like the LML. In 2014, Chevy came out with a fully boxed steel frame, raised the payload capacity of these trucks. This truck today, in a single wheel, has a higher payload capacity than the Dually just a few years before it. The LML stock came with 355 horsepower. It's really easy to bump these things up to 450 horsepower. The Achilles heel of this truck, however, is a CP4 fuel pump. I wanted this truck to last, so we ditched that, went with the Sportsman CP3, running the EFI Live Tunes. The truck itself is an absolute monster. However, one of the biggest downfalls to a new diesel motor, it's gonna be all that emission control stuff. So, one way or another, figure out how you're gonna deal with that. Once you do get these diesels dialed in, they're a million mile motor. I was just keeping the truck rust free. That's why I chose the Silverado. Well, I think this video is just about coming to an end. Hope you guys maybe picked up a thing or two along the way. Remember, I'm no expert, so if you do any of these things, research it on your own first. I can also get a video maybe showing some of the maintenance that I've done on this camper. 18 year old Arctic Fox, needed some work. On Tuesday, we'll be getting a traveling video back out for you guys, so check that out. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, go check them out. In the meantime, be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.